Today on the Geek Group, ear piercing with Billy. Hi there guys, I'm Chris Bowden. And I'm Billy G. Welcome to the Geek Group. Today we are continuing our series on the how to make a Tesla coil out of household objects. Because okay. people can just take these out of their bathroom and they're cool. Uh, <laughs> you can get in trouble. Now this is kind of weird because we're in we're we're at Geek House now. We're not in the pole barn over at yeah, your place. Yeah, heat issues. Yeah, it it got cold. It's December and this is Michigan and it's weenie shrinking cold out there. So we're in the house and we've got more parts. So let's talk about what we've got and where we're at. And uh, Billy here, Jim, come out over here. You get to say hi, Jim who is Billy's stepdad came over and he upgraded these. Tell him about what you did and why. Because I, I made a comment about oh, this. Yeah, you made a comment that because of electricity that having the steel bolts in here would cause a problem or arcs. Right? Yeah, it, it could be a problem. So we went out and bought nylon ones. And this is really cool. So we've got these. Here, we'll show them on the overhead. We got these. They're nylon fasteners. And it's a regular quarter 20 bolt. Um, these are pan head screws. And they're made out of nylon. You can get these. And we use them a lot in the lab. I just didn't think to get them when we went to the hardware are store. Are those required? For some stuff, but not always, it depends. I'm trying to do this really on the cheap, really, really simple. So we're doing it really cheap for us. I mean, we could do this a lot cheaper. We could wind this on like a toilet paper tube and you know, use a nine volt battery and interrupter and all that. But we're trying to make a real test mm -hmm. coil. So it's, it's that balance. Um, but you, you did this, you did all the bolts and you're working on the feet problem as well. Correct. So we're, we're getting feet for the bottom and we don't need that. Um, now you got a bunch of parts. So let's talk about what you got. We, you got a, a thing of magnet wire. Yep. So we have an 11, well, 10 or 11 pound spool. 22 gauge. Of 22 gauge high temp magnet wire. Now here's, a, we'll show you the, the label there. We'll even zoom right in on that. All right, there's your label there. Okay. And uh, when you get the wire, you want to make sure to get high temp magnet wire. Don't get just bare copper wire because it won't work. Um, we've had a lot of people write and be like, oh God, I found a little spool of bare copper wire. If it's bare. It's when you coil them together, it's just going to take the shortest path, which is side to side to side instead of going through the wire. And I don't know if you can provide it for the viewers, but that link you sent me, I just went there and ordered it. I'll see if I can find it. I don't remember the link, but I just found it, did a Google search on 10 pound spool of magnet wire. Um, what else we got? We got the other big copper. This is cool. Um, this. With the hardening issues. Yeah, we'll, we'll talk about that. Um, this is 50 feet of quarter inch OD, because it's tubing, not pipe. This is 50 feet of quarter inch soft copper tubing. And, wow, that's beautiful. Now look at that. This is our already half wound primary coil right there, ready to go. Now don't play with it. When you work with copper, this is an important thing to remember, copper exhibits a property called work hardening, which means every time you bend it, it gets a little harder and it gets a little more brittle and eventually it'll get so hard that it'll just snap like a twig. So leave it in a box, don't mess with it. When we're ready to do that, we're, we're gonna make the mounts, um, we're gonna make our secondary, then we're gonna make the mounts and then we're gonna wind our primary and then we're pretty much done. We're really close on this. So what else do we got? Um, we've got end caps. We've got three of these. Now these are the regular end caps for our, we, we're using four inch PVC pipe. So these are go, the, we got two that are sacrificial for the winding. And then we've got a third one, which will be the top of our secondary. And then the bottom of the secondary is a four inch toilet flange. This is what actually, you're, you're, this is cool because this was your idea with the, we used uh, toilet flanges for the gap this is a much smaller one for people that have tiny poos. And then we got the big one, and we're actually going to turn this upside down and mount it right there, and this will bolt down, and that'll be our mount for the secondary. So it's really simple, really easy, and it'll work good. So we got that. We only just, have a, a safety gap, right? I mean, that's a yep. four-inch to fit inside the four-inch pipe. Yeah, this, this fits inside the pipe, um, which is a really important thing because you want the pipe to just slip right down over it and mm. then you, you'll be able to have your electrical connection and off the bottom. And it's six inch, right? No, this is four because six inch fittings are insanely priced. Um, we're going with the four inch. Just the, the price jump to six inch was nuts. So we're sticking with this for now because we, we really want this to be something that everybody at home yeah. can build. And I've seen four inch Tesla coils make like seven foot arcs. Jim Boltman built one that was insane. He was pulling like seven or eight foot arcs off that thing. It was crazy. He had a whole, whole farm of NSTs 
But uh, no, he didn't NST have a pig. Part. He had so many NSTs that he had pig level power. Ah, uh, things you have in the back. Yeah, he had like oh. a pile of them. It was nuts. This is back at the, I want to say 2001 Tesselton in Keizu. He had, he was pulling seven, eight foot arcs off of Orange Coil. It was crazy. Um, so yeah, that's our basic upgrade with parts and, and what's going on. What we've only got? got a seven or a one safety gap, right? No spark gap yet. Yeah, we've got one safety gap. Well, we built a couple of these, so we've got one for a spark gap. But we're going to be building different types of spark gaps as we go. Okay. So, because I want to show all the different types, we also got some quarter-inch threaded rod. This is also um, the guys across the pond refer to this as all thread, and it's just a pair of quarter twenty stainless rods. Um, nothing special. So we've done a show and tell. That's the basics of everything we got. Now what the main project for today is, is to build the winding rig. And we get to play with power tools. Cool. Because we're going to try and get set up to be able to wind a secondary coil. And if we can wind one, we can wind two or three. And we've got, you got like an eight foot piece of pipe? Yeah. So we should have enough to build two, three, four coils, no problem. Actually, it's a ten foot piece. So we're Easily three or four coils. So we'll wind them all, and then we'll have spares. And then we can show the differences between doing the poly wrap and epoxy, we can do both, which would be really cool. Um, so stay tuned, a little more as it happens. This video was made possible by thousands of private donations from members and viewers like you. Please visit thegeekgroup.org for more information on how you can donate and become a part of our dreams of Avalon. All right, so we've got our pipe. We've got a sawzall. Now we need to work out how long to cut the pipe. Do we need to worry about the black? We'll get there. There's a way to get that off. But yes, we do have to worry about the black. Um, probably don't, but we're, gonna, we're doing this by the book. We're going to make sure. Um, so we're going to measure our pipe. Now this is 4-inch Schedule 40 PVC pipe, right? And this is cell core. So it's actually, it, its actual diameter is right around 4 and a half inches. So we want to build, uh, we want to build a couple different coils so that we can try different experiments. So we're going to say our first one will be a 4 to 1 ratio. So 4 and a half times 4 is 18. So we take this out, and that will be our winding length, will be 18 inches. Now on each end, we've got, okay, we know we're going so to use up, gonna be. Yep, we're going to use up 2 inches on the bottom for that fitting, and then this takes up 2 inches on the top, so that's 22. And we'll add an inch just for safety. So we'll, we'll cut it off at 23 inches for our first one. So I'm going to put that like that and grab my stainless steel Sharpie of science. You're welcome. That is nice. You can get them at Office Max. Little baby coil. All right, here, contractor dude. I'm going to hold this at 23. Now you're making the marks. I'll roll the pipe, okay? Make sure you're straight. Okay. Okay. You can pull on that to, to get it where you want it, but that's your yeah. spot there. Yeah. Make a mark. Got it. Okay. Now we're going to roll. Make a mark. Got it. Got it. Good. 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 And we're just going to go all the way around. Good. Make our marks. It's 2001 Tesla's fun. How big was his four inch coil? Four it. inches in diameter. Like how tall? I don't know. About yay? Oh, <laughs> God. How does it not start to the ground? It works. You'll see. Oh, You'll see. I All right, now that's our first one. So what we're going to do at this point is we, we've made our series of marks all the way around. Now we play connect the dots. And, and get a pretty good average out of them. It's never going to be perfect. Cord. If this needed to be perfect, we'd be doing it on the lathe, but that's a trip to Kalamazoo to get the CNC lathe. Have I mentioned we need a lab here? Yeah, we'd ne if we had a lab, we could do this easier. Oh, when we start doing these for real, like building serious coils, um, we'll do them at the lab. We'll use our TL1 lathe, and, uh, but this will be after we get the Grand Rapids lab up and running. We could take and just chuck this on the lathe, Cut it off to length, wind it, and coat it all on all on the lathe. Yeah, but we still don't have a lab that we're going to be able to get yet. Not yet. We're working on it. I could have done Static electricity fun. Too, that be yeah, that'd be nice and easy to do. But we're not doing that. We're doing it like men. So we're good. Here, Billy, blow the end of that. All right. Pow, pow, power strip. You're going to plug a sawzall into the... On desk power oh, strip. That's all right. Uh, Actually, yeah, all right. That, safety first. That is the worst idea. I can ever yeah, this is it gonna suck. It pulls seven, so bad. six point five amps. 
All the lights are still on. Muscle. All right, Billy. Yeah. You're gonna hold out here. You hold here. Just what you want to do is stick your arm right in there and just get a really good. At the very end here. <laughs> Way over here. Just hold it. Hang on. Right. Hard. On the same side. Okay. All right. Push down. <laughs> Wuss, come on. You got a hair on your ass. You just stick your hand right up in there. All right, you ready? Yeah. All right. See, I'm going to do this this way when it's wrong. I, we get to blame me. I know. Okay. I'm not too bad. That's off uh, a curve. I'm within a curve. There's your word of the day, curve. Now you know what that is because you're a contractor, but Bill, you know what curve is? Curve? Curve. No. Curve is the thickness of the blade when, when you make a cut. Like here, okay, it's about you know, eighth inch, sixteenth inch, but it's, it's the, the, eighth inch of, the, the eighth inch of material that gets turned into sawdust. That, that width of the blade that just, you know, if you start with something that's an inch long and you cut it with that, now you only have seven eighths inch of material, that's kerf. Now for this, we can just ignore it, but when you're doing really precision stuff, you have to take that, you have to take that into account, so, yeah. Thank you! Okay, now that we have masking tape, we'll show how, we're gonna set this one aside. That's, that's our first one. Now we're gonna make another one. Um, and we're just gonna, we got a slight little jog on there, but it's only like an eighth inch, so I'm not gonna get in a twist over it. Now. Billy, you gotta keep watching out for the camera. All right. All right, now our first one is a standard four to one ratio, okay? Our second one, we're gonna go five to one. So that's four and a half times five, which is 22 yep. and a half. Okay, so we'll say 22 and a half. Plus. Now we're going to add four inches, 26 and a half, and that should be about right. And then one more, like we did the other Yep, and then boom, 27 and a half. All right, because we can always whittle off a little more later, so I always add an inch. It's, it's really easy to whittle a bit off. That's for you. Okay, you want to pull on this a little bit when you do each one, um, and then we'll make sure we're straight. Which way are we going? Let's let's go this way. Okay. 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 Good. 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 I was able to just follow the line around. <laughs> Is that all of them? Yep. I was able to follow the line around, so we got rid of the little air on the end there. So we can cut a whole new air on this end. Mm -hmm. Look at that professional contractor mojo right there. Static. You want to cut one or you want me to? Oh, go, ahead. <laughs> go ahead, you take it. Down. Yeah. I'll grab the pipe again. <laughs> Someone else to blame. Yes, good system. Pro project manager skills there happen. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> All right, Claire. How close is that? Is that better? That's no, no jog at all. Perfect. Look at that, right on the line. That's why I make the big money. See, a little practice, I get better at this. I've done this once or twice. The only one that really sucked was when we did uh, like the big Haruka coil, where we're cutting huge PVC. Ah. We had to cut that sitting on it. Oh, that sucks so bad. It took like an hour to lay out right. It's just not fun. Okay, so we've got our four to one or five to one. Um, we still got a lot of pipe left. I think we can definitely get two more. 
Let's make another one, because we can do these two as saran wrap, and then we'll do these two for epoxy and see the differences. See, this is a research project, because you can never have too many secondary coils. What about a bipolar? We could do that. We could we can do whatever you want. We got pipes cheap. <laughs> so, all right, let's do the next one. Um, All right, so we're going to leave this one as the super candlestick secondary science. We've got these two as our standard. These would be the poly wrap standard cheap system testicles, and we're going to do one for epoxy. Um, and we might epoxy the giant one too, just because we can. But uh, yeah, that's that's our set of testicles out of one 10 inch or 10 foot pipe. So I got a question. Sure. So if you wrap all four of these, are they interchangeable in this one testicle? Yes. Oh, yes. In theory, you could okay. uh, all these for sure. Them. That one's just not going to work as well because this we're going to intentionally make one candlestick. Okay. Um, what happens so when you candlestick it? Huh? What happens when you candlestick it? You're going to get to see. Please explain that to people. Who don't know. Okay. We're, we're gonna we're gonna cover we're I we're know. gonna cover that. We're, we'll do a whole video mm -hmm. just on this one. So we'll, we'll get into detail on that. But this is our first set of primaries, and that's how you measure and cut your primaries. So what we did was we took um, Sec measured, primaries? or secondaries, sorry. Okay. Um, you measure your engagement for here. So you're going to lose a couple inches there. You're going to want to use a 4 to 1 or a 5 to 1 ratio. So it's 4 times the diameter. So measure your outside diameter. Even though it's four inches, that's four inches inside. You got about a quarter inch on either side, so it's about four and a half on the outside. Um, go to the nearest eighth. You don't you don't have to super super accurate measure these. It's not that kind of project. Give or take an eighth an inch is fine. Um, but these are four to ones. This is five to one, and then we've got one here that's just candlestick. Candlestick is where it's stupid tall, like a like a dinner table candle. So we've got that just as a demonstration to show people why you may or may not want to do that. Um, so we're going to take these two and just set them aside. So go put these in the other room. And we're going to build our winding jig to fit this one. And then we can do either on it. And when we come back in our next video, we're going to teach people how to build a winding jig. Okay. Cool. So I want to thank you guys for watching. Please remember to rate, comment, and subscribe here at The Geek Group. I'm Chris Bowden. And I'm Billy G. Have fun, guys. See ya. This video was made possible by a grant from the Future Girl Foundation. This video was made possible by thousands of private donations from members and viewers like you. Please visit thegeekgroup.org for more information on how you can donate and become a part of our dreams of Avalon.